So this would be the ventricular system. All right. So we talked about in one of the other videos the venous drainage and uh, the meninges and kind of how the dura mater will form those sinuses, superior sagittal and such that um, will drain the blood in a certain way uh, that's being supplied by the internal carotid or the vertebral basilar systems, the circular willis. Uh, <clears throat> another substance that's going to go into the venous system, particularly up through the superior sagittal sinus, through a little opening called an arachnoid granulation, which we'll get into in another video, is the cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid is going to be produced internally, uh, uh, deep inside the brain, and the CSF, this fluid is going to provide buoyancy and um, support to the brain, as well as uh, protection and some other functions, but it, it uh, provides support to an organ that doesn't otherwise have any internal architecture. There's no skeleton in your brain. There are no brain bones. Um, so it has to stay, uh, um, support its own way through buoyancy. And the CSF and the certain amount of pressure it produces, uh, the hydraulic pressure, keeps that brain uh, in good shape. So a lot of things can happen in the CSF. We'll talk about in another video, communicating, non-communicating uh, hydrocephalus. But this is kind of where it starts. So your brain actually is going to start out as a, a hollow tube, and then you get some uh, uh, some vesicles or enlargements, uh, the primary vesicles, um, uh, uh, telencephalon, diencephalon, rhombencephalon. Then you get some secondary vesicles that will split up, but it become the parts of the brain. We'll do that in another video. But all along that process, there's an internal tube that is drawn out with the brain. Your brain, uh, as I've drawn several times, oops, several times, and still can't get it right, evidently. Looks like this. There's the cerebellum, midbrain, and uh, your brainstem. This is the temporal lobe. This part right here, the tip, the anterior pole of the temporal lobe, was at one point the very end of the, um, the telencephalon. Actually, the telencephalon and the diencephalon are both part of the prosencephalon. I kind of misspoke earlier, but skip that for now. This was the first part of the brain, but as it grew in a tube inside your skull, it starts to grow and curl back on itself uh, like a ram's horn. So all the way around, kind of in this direction, which is why the temporal lobe was once the very tip of the, uh, the growing or developing central nervous system. And then it grew, um, you know, like a ram's horn. You've seen... Seen those on sheep before, like a ram's horn? All right, and inside that ram's horn spiral growth, there's a hollow. That's going to produce this um, cerebrospinal fluid. Right. So we're going to have. This is what it looks like from the ladder view, that hollow inside the brain. So this is the lateral ventricle. You'll find one in each hemisphere. You've got a little bit that dips back into the occipital lobe, some that's in the, uh, the lateral pole in the temporal lobe, and then up in the frontal and the body in the parietal lobe. So the brain will sort of sit right like that, right? the temporal lobe, around this ventricular system. Uh, there is a right and left ventricle, lateral ventricle, I'm not going to draw the other one. I'll just kind of give its impression behind uh, this one on the other side. All right, it's over here and over there. So that's the other one on the other side. We're looking at the la lateral view of the left hemisphere. That would be the right lateral ventricle. The two right and left lateral ventricles have a specialized tissue inside called uh, choroid plexus. The choroid plexus will produce the CSF. Okay, So the choroid plexus produces the CSF. The CSF is then going to drain through these interventricular foramen, sometimes called the foramen, uh, foramen of Monroe. This is the interventricular foramen. I'll write those down. Interventricular foramen, foramina, um, of Monroe, all right? You don't have to remember that, but some people like the eponyms. So the um, right and left interventricular foramen are going to drain into the third ventricle, the laterals being the first and second. The third ventricle is a very thin midline structure 
where those two uh, interventricular foramen drain. This has got the shape of kind of a face with big lips and that like a moose, those are his antlers. This eye here on this side of this face is the, intervent the uh, <clears throat> interthalamic adhesion. <clears throat> I'm sure we mentioned that in a previous video. <clears throat> this is a place where there's some um, white matter structure that talks between the right and left uh, thalami. This is the third ventricle uh, into which the CSF drains through the uh, foramen of Monroe into the third ventricle. There are some choroid plexus in the third ventricle also producing CSF. But then the third ventricle will drain. See, this looks like the moose's long neck through the cerebral aqueduct, right? Uh, also known as the aqueduct of Silvis, Silvius. The cerebral aqueduct is going to drain the CSF down through the midbrain and uh, into an area that is known as the fourth ventricle. And it is composed of space between the pons anteriorly and the cerebellum and the cerebellar peduncles um, posteriorly. And then the peduncles kind of on the side. And they'll form this space that's sort of diamond shaped. And it is the, the, the portion that was in the uh, rhombencephalon, one of those primary vesicles of the developing, developing brain, which gave rise to the uh, myelencephalon, the medulla oblongata, and the metencephalon, the pons and cerebellum. And it leaves this space that's sort of diamond or rhombus shaped called the fourth ventricle. Fourth ventricle then would continue uh, theoretically as the central canal <clears throat> of the spinal cord, which uh, is not always patent, um, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Now, when you get to the fourth ventricle, the CSF has began, uh, begun in the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricles through the foramen of Monroe into the third ventricle, third ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct into the fourth ventricle, and from the fourth ventricle, it's going to drain via three routes into the cerebral, uh, the subarachnoid space. <clears throat> subarachnoid space will then wash over the surface of, uh, let me draw this coming out. So there's two lateral exits and one medial exit or midline exit, and they're going to drain into the subarachnoid space. And once the cerebral spinal fluid is in the subarachnoid space, It'll wash up over the surface of the brain and end up draining into the superior sagittal sinus via arachnoid granulations. And then from there, that uh, one-way flow of the cerebral spinal fluid joins into the, the venous drainage of the skull, uh, confluence of sinuses and such, and then out into the internal jugular um, vein. You can check that out in a previous video. These three exits from the fourth ventricle, the midline one, the median foramen is also called the foramen of magendi. There's one magendi and it's in the middle. The median aperture is the foramen of magendi. And then there are two lateral uh, drainages into the cerebral uh, subarachnoid space of the cerebral spinal fluid. And those two on the laterals are, uh, let's see, how do we spell that? Lushka. These are the foramina of lushka. Right? So lateral for Lushka, median for Magendi, those are the three ways that the cerebral spinal fluid drains from the fourth ventricle, which is supplied by the cerebral aqueduct, which drains the third ventricle, which is supplied by the interventricular foramen, uh, foramina, which, is, uh, which drains the, the large lateral ventricles where the choroid plexus, choroid plexus is that produce the CSF in the first place. Now in the subarachnoid space, there are some uh, large openings, like there's a little pouch here called the pontine cistern where a lot of that fluid gathers. Um, we'll get into that in another video. So that is the ventricular and CSF system. And um, next we'll do cranial nerves.